All right, folks, we're back. Charlie, we're back. Where are we at? Back. Uh, we're at Chubbs Pub. Chubbies. Chubbs Pub. Chubbs was a real guy, we found out. Chubbs was a real man. Don't it, know anything about him, but that he was real. I know that he was a good guy. Well, we don't know that either. Well, I'm going to We just assume. know he's Chubbs. Hey, with a name like Chubbs, how could you be a bad guy, Miles? That is very true. What I love about Chubbs, as always, I got a pull tab machine over there. We probably got to throw a 20 or 40 or a 60 oh. or 100 in that thing before we leave. You want Miles? That reminds me. I was at the filling station, gas station, some may call it. And I was like, you know, I'm sitting here filling gas. And I wish I could like just have a pull tab machine right here. So like while I'm filling yeah. up the old uh, truck, I could just buy some pull tabs. That actually would be a great spot, right? Like just it's just one machine. Yeah, yeah. Like just, the gas pump is also a pull tab machine. Exactly. I mean, I don't know why they don't put pull tab machines in a lot of different places. You know, like where's a place, Miles, that that you just wish there was a pull tab machine? <laughs> I, so, uh, not to brag, going to be a dad again. Congratulations. Been going to appointments, right? I've spent more time in a hospital than I have in the last decade, in the last couple months, right? Yeah, you should really see the doctor more. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what my mom and wife say, but that's not what the point of it is. How great would it be when you're waiting at the doctor to have a pull tab machine in the lobby? Oh my gosh. Hey, why why limit it to the the lobby? Why not putting it right in the delivery room? I mean, yeah. deliveries can take hours. Oh, my God. Labor. I tell you what, I don't know yet, but I'm guessing that it takes a long time, depending. Yeah. And it would be nice to pass the time with gambling. And not just miles. You know better. It's not gambling. It's investing. Yeah, sorry. And, sorry, and yes. you have a new child coming into the world. So why not invest in their college fund while they're coming out the deal? And birth is expensive. What better way to invest and get a return so you can pay for it? I mean, I think that's great. And while like at the, well, even just at, not even the delivery room, just any room in the hospital should have a pull tab machine. Cause I tell you what hospitals are fucking boring. Seriously. Yeah. And what's funny is at best I, they're boring. So I had an ultrasound, right? And Anne's doing her thing and You, you had know, an ultrasound? No, Ann did. Doing her thing. They just shove the dad in the far corner of the room. Oh they, yeah. Like they have they could put chairs closer and in different spots in the room, but they choose to put it in the far back corner. And I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they would have handed me a coloring book during it, is what it felt like. But if they had pull tabs, I would love to sit in the corner. And I will say guys don't give birth, but sometimes we feel like we are when we are not winning in the restroom, you know? Oh, and I, so I, why I, not put one in the stall while we're yeah, taking care of next business? Next to the condom machine, they should have a turntable thing for pull tabs. Next to the Rough Riders, you got the pull tabs. Exactly. Oh, that's good. I'm trying to think. Where else? Where else? Airports should be. I mean, they, some airports have like casino rooms and stuff. In Vegas, yeah. It just would be nice to be able to have them at each gate. That would be cool. And also, like each airplane has a bathroom uh, section. Why not have a little pull tab section? Why not put it over by the uh, the um, what you might call it? The where you know the the jump seats. You don't need jump seats for for the flight attendants. You know those seats they sit in. When the when the captain says, "All right," uh, the fold down one. Yeah, the fold down ones. Yeah. What are they even there for? Well, also, it's just like, yeah, everyone should get instead of getting a thing of crackers, you should just get a pull tab. That's true. Maybe two pull tabs if there's turbulence, distract you a little yeah. bit. Start bribing all the people when they have bad service. Yeah. Give them a pull tab instead of a drink ticket. Well, do both. Yeah. Drink it. Yeah. Regardless, more places need to have pull tabs. I concur. I concur. It is settled. Well, I'm excited for another day of bellied up. And it's an honor to be bellied up with you at this uh, bar over here at Chubbs. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking some callers. Let's do it. Welcome to the bellied up podcast. Who are we talking to today? You're talking to Allie. Allie. How yes. are you, Allie? You doing good today? No, I'm doing all right. I've had better days. Oh, well, let's talk about it. What, what's, what's on your mind? 
Um, so I was skiing Thanksgiving weekend and I ended up carrying my ACL, MCL, lateral and medial meniscus. So everything but the PCL. Yeah. You overachiever. Come on. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, that's what you get for doing physical activities, Allie. <laughs> Well, that's what, like Michael know, Scott said, everyone I know that skis awesome. has torn legs, <laughs> you know, I just, that's why I don't yeah, well, ski. Well, I'm from Wisconsin Good and I'm you. out in Reno now. Out in Reno from Wisconsin. So you didn't grow up skiing mm-hmm. being in Wisconsin or did you grow up skiing on one of the dumps that they snow on? I skied Alpine Valley. Alpine Valley, nice. Sounds fancy as shit. I have no yeah. idea what it is, yeah. but oh my god! Oh, it is fancy out there. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there a chalet? It is fancy. Do they have a chalet? Do they have a chalet? They do. But... They yeah, do. I knew they would with oh, a name like here? Alpine Valley. Yeah, they do. Okay, so uh, I mean, was your leg just like flopping around? Was it just like dangling there, like a loose tooth? It kind of was. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I actually got back up after it happened. I got back up to see down the mountain and it just like totally gave out. And then like ski patrol had to come like cart me down the oh, mountain. Oh, so you were one of the people <laughs> that was riding coffin style on the back of the snowmobile? Yeah, I was. Was it embarrassing or was you in too much pain to even notice? Um, I was actually not embarrassed. I was more so embarrassed that I fell down the second time and like face planted again. Oh, yeah. I mean, you didn't have one knee, so I suppose that would happen on that. <laughs> this is the big tragedy. Yeah. This is the big tragedy of ski hills. Like riding down on one of those sleds behind the snowmobile seems like. I would pay to do that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the only way you can do that is if you're in excruciating pain or like almost dead, you know, <laughs> I feel like they should offer that as a service. One, yeah, ski patrol should just offer to cart people down. They are, they do get bored easily. They I get, feel like they set up these traps so people get injured. Oh, so, so you think you were, you were booby trapped is what you think. I think so. Okay. I think so. Well, I mean, you might want to pursue that. You could have a uh, lawsuit on your hands and you could own the mountain. A little legal then you, Yeah, then you can ride up and down on that ski patrol thing all you want. Yeah, and since this is our idea, you got to invite me and Miles out to to ride that thing because I've always wanted to ride it. To ride it. You want to ride down on a sled. Yeah, I do. Ski patrol. Yeah. Yeah, I want I want um a power glided sled. What mountain is, are we suing, by the way? <laughs> I'm not sure if I should say this. Oh, you yeah, you can. We'll bleep it out. Okay, okay. It's Mount Rose. Mount Rose. Oof. Where the where well, is Well, we that? might yeah. as well ma- name rename it Mount Bellied Up because <laughs> we now own it, Charlie. <laughs> Soon, Miles. We don't count our mountains before they're. <laughs> Hatched. Um, hatched. Where is Mount Rose? Right outside of Reno. Okay. See, this is why you don't go past Alpine Valley, you know? I mean, sunburst if you're feeling adventurous. What about Whitecapped up in northern Wisconsin? Whitecapped? I've never gone to Whitecapped. You've never gone to Whitecapped? No, I never never skied. I didn't ski till I was like 19 years old. This is the first time I've ever seen Charlie be stumped on a place in Wisconsin. I don't know where the hell it is. Soak this in. Yeah, where is Whitecap? I knew what Whitecap was. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Do they have a chalet there? First of all, it's pronounced (laughs) chalet. Thank you. Yeah, see, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, I know it. They do. Do they really have a chalet at uh, Whitecap? I was really young when we went there, but. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they do. It's in Upton, Wisconsin. <sighs> oh, yeah, I know it. It's right off of Highway J. I have no idea. Um, uh, yeah. It says it's on County Road E. <laughs> it's <laughs> County Road E. Um, did, I, did I say J? I, oh, God. I J. E. Yeah, you meant, you meant E. You meant yeah. E. You meant E, Miles. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much for that correction. Um. Yep. So what are yeah. you, did they fix you up? Are you, is yeah, so I had knee? surgery December 18th. The oh. knee, it's there. Okay, so you had surgery it's the 18th. Did it go well? More fit. Um, yeah, I ended up passing out two days later from <sighs> not eating and the drugs they gave me. That, you know, 
what what drugs did they give you? <laughs> yeah, pain a, pain that drugs. That sounds awesome. I think cotton. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You, do you have any extras? Like yeah, Miles, that's a felony. I mean, I'm asking if she has any extra because I didn't want her to do them all because she faints. Yeah. Well, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> Uh, we we almost were owning a mountain, but now we got a felony that we're fighting. <laughs> now I know. Yeah, he just wants to steal the mountain. Steal, steal on top of this, just add to the felony charges. <laughs> so, what are you doing now that you are just sitting on your ass? You, yeah, what's? So I'm listening to a lot of belly dubs. <laughs> As you should. I'm watching a lot of movies, <laughs> reading books. And losing my mind. I'm gonna be honest. My dad sound. My dad wishes he's like he loves that. So Nate Bargatsky hit the nail on the head when he said that old people love having surgeries, like they just love it. Mm. My dad would yeah. love what she's living in right now. A little surgery, just relaxing at home, <laughs> watching movies. You know, I want you to count your blessings here. You know, if you didn't, uh, yeah, but like. If you didn't fall down on that mountain, tib, fib, or whatever you did, and ended up having surgery and sitting at home, think of all the the relaxation time that you're getting right now. Pretty soon, you're going to be have to be working and doing all of that stuff. Just enjoy the moment right here, right now. What do you think of that? I mean, I could, but like, it's like a border collie being stuck in a kennel for eight weeks. <laughs> Eight weeks, you know, like I just eh, like more like nine months, but oh my gosh, because yeah, and then you got to do the rehab and everything after. So, uh, so mm-hmm. are you looking for ways to amuse yourself while you're stuck in yeah. doing all this? Okay, well, Charlie's got a list yeah. of stuff you can do at home by yourself. <laughs> Why do you say that? What? <laughs> Why do you say that, Miles? Well, I. I <laughs> Let's hear it. What do wait, you wait, wait, wait. Why do yeah, I? What are you suggesting, Miles? Yeah. Allie and I would like to know why you think I have a list of stuff to do at my house by myself. Because you like playing cards, mm-hmm. playing, playing solitaire. <laughs> Charlie. What? Why, why am I only playing the card games with one person, Miles? Well, I just don't imagine that you have a lot of people. Are you saying house. I have no friends, Miles? What are you Miles, doing? Are you saying me and Charlie don't have a lot of friends? Well, you have friends that go to work during the day, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, Allie, he's digging himself into a bit of a hole here. He better uh, be careful because he might tear his ACL climbing out of it. Um, are you a cribbage <laughs> player, Allie? Played it when I was younger. All right. Well, maybe you could start making cribbage boards. That's a good one. Ooh. Make them and sell them, and then start like a cribbage league out here in Reno. There you go. That's one idea. <laughs> Tears her ACL once, and now has stuck with a cribbage board making business for life. Uh, you know what? Honestly, though, I think that this is that w- this could be the start of some because Reno, obviously, it's casinos, it's gambling, it's whatever. Ellie, how mm-hmm. many times have you gone to a casino? Miles, how many times have you gone to a casino and been like, where's the Euchre games? Where's the Sheep's Head game? Where's the cribbage? You know, what was your favorite card game growing up? Go fish. Where's the go? Where's that the? Is, why can't you gamble? That would be funny to be able to gamble on go fish. That would be good. You know, we, we should start our own uh, casino of games that we actually like to play. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like blackjack. Like a Midwest casino. A Midwest casino. Yeah. I think if you want to start a little side We're gig. Like play. I think I got a good one for you. You're going to start a side gig. Sounds like you're a little entrepreneurial. <laughs> and it's going to be a uh, fun, uh, uh, like anniversary Valentine's Day cards business. And you're going to steer into the skid. You're going to call it Fallen for you. That's nice. <laughs> And then you have the whole backstory that hey, I blew out my knee. I didn't have anything to do. So, and I was lonely and I wanted to find love. And so I made these cards during that time. And then you have a whole. Backstory. Wait, are you assuming I'm single? Oh, shoot. Well, as that was coming Uh-oh. out of my mouth, I knew I was going to catch flack for that. I was going to bring it up to Allie. <laughs> are you indeed single or no? 
Yes, I'm technically. Yes, I am single. Oh, whoa, 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 Miles. I just Miles. wanted to call him out on that. Hang on, hang on, Allie. I, I heard I a little unbelievable intuition, Charlie. Miles, you were very excited there, uh, but I heard a word. She she slipped in there. She said technically. Well, she was maybe had a friend she would hang out with, but now <laughs> she doesn't have a knee. So. Wait, Allie, were you technically single? Did you just get out of a relationship and screw the pooch on your knee? Yeah. Oh, geez. Is oh, it? Oh, oh. Uh, I know. Now I feel bad. Well, I'm the one who doubled down on it. Are you? Did you do the breaking up, Allie, or no? It was mutual. I was going to break up with him, but then he ended up doing it. So. Oh, that he, sucks. He broke up with you, and you broke up with your knee. It's a tough scenario. <laughs> Wait, when he broke up with you, were yeah. you upset that you couldn't be the one to break up with him? I don't know, like slightly, but like I'm not very of a com- confrontational person, so I'm kind of glad he ended up doing it. Oh, you're not very confrontational? What was all that? How do you know I'm single shit you just pulled on me? Mm. <laughs> Sounded confrontational. Um, Normally, I'm not used to it. I'm not good with confrontation. We're bringing out the best in her, Charlie. Is I just wanted to call you out, Miles. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are really bringing out my best. So are you on the... Are you? Uh, I mean, I imagine that breakup went like he started breaking up with her and she was just like started smiling. Yeah. I was going to break up with you. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. They high five. Uh-huh. This is over, right? <laughs> and then they just, all right, I'm going to grab my shit. <laughs> Where's my toothbrush at? And then she left. <laughs> Is that how it went? <laughs> no, it was a little bit more like somber than that. But I mean, if we want to say that, then we can do that. Well, are you already back on the app swiping or are you going to wait for the knee to heal? Um, you know, I'm back on the app swiping, you know. Okay. Any success? No. No. Do you have in your profile that your knee's busted right now? Or are you going to save that for the third like message? I think that for a little bit later, you know, that I'm a little <laughs> broken right now. You could show your sense of humor and there's got to be a photo of you riding the sled down the hill. <laughs> Have that be it. Be that photo I, on your thing. No, I didn't get a picture. Oh, I didn't get a damn. picture. What a tragedy. How's that possible? No. The knee wasn't the tragedy. The no photo op was the tragedy. Yeah. What were your friends doing I, at this time? When you, when you broke yourself, what were your freaking friends doing? I was skiing by myself. Oh, God. I, I, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? She was skiing by herself, I Miles. Know, skiing is a social activity. No, it's, it's, sometimes it's just great to get out there. I've skied by myself quite a bit. You know, and by mm-hmm. the way, you go to you go to the mountain. You lose, a single people go by ourselves. Us single people go by ourselves is what she says. Now, yeah. I guess I'm coming from the, the, yeah. the only time I'm going skiing is if I'm forced so I guess that makes sense. Well, let's see here. So you didn't get a picture. You're you're broken, broken up. God, it's <laughs> it's you're, a, you're single and lonely, and, and your and in knees Reno. exploded. You're sitting in Reno. <sighs> well, that's also my other problem is that like out here in Reno, there's just no Midwestern guys. Well, yeah, you you're know? in Reno. That yeah, that is a shame. <laughs> No Midwestern gentlemen. There's no Midwest gentlemen. What kind of guys are you encountering in Reno? What's the typical Reno guy like? Well, they're all very outdoorsy, which I'm also very outdoorsy. Not right now. Well, like they just like don't have. Well, my, yes, that's true. My, Thank you, Miles. You, you and Miles. I'm on your team, Allie. Miles, uh, we're you know you. he's he's shooting shots on this, and uh, we're just gonna have to team up and uh, knock them down together. Um, so, what's the difference though in a Reno guy and a Midwest guy? There's like a Midwest like personality that's just like really different. I don't know how to describe it. Well, that doesn't help because we're on a They're podcast. Yeah, we're we're hoping that <laughs> Allie, there's not much else it's going on. Nice. Midwest nice. So they're not nice out there? Yeah. Miles is over they're here nice. laughing at himself. Midwest nice. Do you like how Miles like yells at you for not describing it? Because we're on a podcast and he just takes a minute to just laugh to himself <laughs> off mic about his own joke. He's like, if no one else is going like, to laugh. How at do you it. feel about this? I'm speechless. <laughs> well, that sucks because we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're well, lo- you're looking. I mean, okay, go ahead. No, you go ahead. All right. So you're saying that you're looking for a Midwest nice guy. Are you thinking someone like Miles who roasts you and then laughs at his own jokes? Because there are some Midwest guys that, you know, they're not always that nice either, yeah. you know? Language of love, I say, from the Midwest is sarcasm. We were so just... Like, I mean, like a sarcastic guy. We, uh, this... We, we just we, were writing this video. Miles and I were just talking about this. What Midwest love language, you think it's sarcasm, which is nice. That's mm-hmm. nice. We were saying acts yeah. of service. We were saying like the uh, Midwest guys are so out of touch with their emotions. The only love language they know is like, oh, yeah, no, I'll do that for you. Yeah, I'll fix your gutter. Yeah. I'll, uh, you know, take. Actually, oh, go this, ahead. Did, this did come up once like this. I had another surgery like two years ago because I constantly break myself and a guy was using my car to drive me back and forth from work. And he's like, oh, I'm going to clean your car. And then, like, I showed him your Midwest survival guide, Charlie. Yeah. He's like, wait, do you think I'm in love with you because I cleaned your car? And I was like, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, how did, and how did that go? And he's like, oh, that's weird. And I was like, yeah, I, I know that it's not. Yeah. Like, you're not in love with me. He's like, no, it was. Really nice of you. She's so like, oh yeah, I thought it was weird too. I totally didn't think you're in love with me, and I wasn't ready to be married to you. She's like, yeah, me too. Exactly. <laughs> so where's that guy now? Is that the guy you just broke up with, or no? Well, where that's another guy. I don't know. He disappeared. He disappeared. Lots of guys. Lots of surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, you know, true. He, he, he's just being, this is how he shows his glove. Okay, well, yeah. well, so here's the problem. The, ne- the next guy that you date, you got to marry him. Otherwise, you're going to break another part of your body if you break up. Oh, that is true. So. I just have to be careful next time. She, yeah. she gets into a relationship. They break up and she just immediately just be wearing, starts wearing a helmet. <laughs> just. Very cautious. Wrap <laughs> myself in bubble wrap. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, so- I, I don't really know what we were supposed to give advice on, Charlie, but uh, that was a nice bar conversation, cool. don't you think? That was good. Did we, What didn't we answer for you, Allie? Is there anything, I, we any uh, meat we left on the bone here? Um, no, I think you guys answered because I'm just going to start a cribbage business now and I'll, or like a games, and it's going to be like a business and I'll be falling... What was the name of it? Falling for you. Falling. With a four. Falling for you. There you go. Four and a and a letter U. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll do like a whole like Midwest card game little business. Yeah. I like that. Start your own Midwest casino. Well, Allie. Did she pass out from the oxycotton? Yeah, or yeah. What? what's going on there? Did we lose you? Did you pop one another one of those pills when we started this conversation? or <laughs> No. <laughs> well, Allie, listen, I, our, I've, I wish you the best here. I hope you heal up quickly. I hope you find uh, love. What dating app are you on? Where can people find you? Um, I'm actually not on any right now. <laughs> Well, I tried those and they didn't work because there's no Midwest guys out here. Uh, well, if you get on the apps, you can uh, change well, your actually, location. We have an app for you. Oh, yeah. What do you think? We of- are currently equal partners in an app with another caller called OnlyFins. And it is a dating app where in order to get on the app, you have to have your profile picture holding a fish and... If you are going to start a conversation, the conversation needs to start with both people sending a photo of them holding a fish, and we call it fish picks. Fish picks. But the 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 fish then has to be in another pick with a ruler, and you can only engage with the person if you have the same species of fish on your profile. You interested? But I'm not a fisher. Oh. I'm not a fisher. Oh. Are you looking for a fisher? Potentially. Okay, this is good market research. It is. It is. Yeah. And um, I think my initial thought was maybe right, that the guys need to be the fishermen and the gals can be anyone. So we'll, we'll workshop we'll it. We'll workshop sure. it. So, I like it. Yeah. Allie, no, it's okay. great, inf- great feedback. 
I think Allie's trying to get off the phone with us. The person who is sitting there with the bum knee is is trying to get the hell off the phone with us. Is that right, Allie? A little bit. Oh, my gosh. How are people going to listen to this podcast if the person we're talking to doesn't want to be talking I know. to us? It's, I was just, it just kind of just set in, Charlie. Oh, geez. Sorry, uh, Allie. Well, we screwed up on this well, one. We wish you the best. We're gonna. Thank you. We're gonna. I'll, I'll consider the app as long as I don't have to fish. All okay. right, sounds good, Allie. Hey, we're sorry you got hurt. Even Miles is sorry. I am sorry. Thank you. All right, heal Thank up you. quick. Thank you. All right, bye bye now. Bye. We overstayed our welcome yet I, again. I, you know, this has happened a couple <laughs> times, Miles. We're not like getting cues. You know, at first, I thought it was maybe their issue, but you know, it's starting to become what they would call in. They would call it a pattern. It and is a pattern. We we can't have two callers where the callers are trying to get off the phone with yeah. us. You know. Well, seems like a good good gal. She does. Yeah. Do you think we offended her? I definitely offended her at some point. Yeah. But I'm willing to, to shoulder that. That's good. That's important. Should we take another caller? Let's do it. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to today? Hey, how's it going? It's Teddy. Hey, Teddy. How you doing, man? Charlie, I'm, I'm doing all right. Is Miles, you bet you guys there too? I am here. What's going on, Teddy? Oh my gosh, guys. I'm uh, just enjoying this Monday. Doing pretty well. What's going on with you guys? We're just bellied up to the bar. Why don't you belly on up with us and tell us what's on your mind? Well, I would love to belly up to the bar and tell you guys what's up. Uh, born and raised in California, currently living in Seattle. And just met some really cool people over the past, I don't know, four or five years since being here in Seattle. And uh, some of the coolest people have been from Michigan, <laughs> Some of my best friends are from Livonia. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that area. Where in but, Michigan uh, is that? Livonia? Livonia? <laughs> I, oh. I guess it's outside Detroit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Livonia. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that, I was like, yeah, I yeah, think someone's said. spinning uh, yarn there, my guy. <laughs> Livonia. Come oh, Lord. <laughs> the no. girl's name was Ima. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ima from Livonia. Yeah, you guys were here. You see, I'm, I'm holding up my two hands, and it's right here on the lower peninsula, but I guess Charlie would say that they're not the real Mitten State, right? I would Don't say that. Don't listen to him on that. He's never – he wears gloves. <sighs> you know – Okay. Don't make me go back into that whole situation. Anyway, so tell us about the Lebonians. Here's the thing. They're yeah. great people, like some of the best people ever. And here's my, here's my problem, guys. I, I dated a very nice lady – Oh God, maybe, maybe three years ago now. And she was from Michigan. She went to state. So I made the mistake one night. The first time I met her, she goes, yeah, I went to, I'm born and raised in Michigan, went to school in Michigan. And I said, go blue. And turns out it was supposed to be go green. So I botched that one right from the get go. Oof. Uh, but then uh, a couple of years later, I met someone and she was also from state. And then a week later I met someone and she was from Umich. And nothing, nothing ever worked out with any of these love interests, but they're all from Michigan. And I haven't talked to anyone except for Michigan women since. And I'm really conflicted, guys. I don't know what to do. I love it here in Seattle. But is there something in the water in Michigan that, like, the women there are just better? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so chemicals. You got, you got a little cr – yeah. Don't ask about the water in Michigan. That's a whole another thing. You want to light a river on fire? <laughs> um, oh, oh, no, yeah, that's, that. that's Ohio. Oh, no. Never mind. That's Ohio. So, okay. So it sounds like you have a bit of a crush on all women in Michigan is what it sounds like. So why don't you go ahead? Bingo. Why don't you tell us what about Michigan women makes them so attractive? They're they're good people. They're very they're not the kind of smart that's like trying to outsmart you and make you feel stupid. But uh, man, they both of the most recent ones play soccer. They are very, I think, uh, genuinely just 
attractive humans. I don't know how to say that without being weird, but they're, they're physically attractive and uh, just fun to hang around, fun to talk to. Now, so why, so they're physically attractive. We got that. What about their personality? Do you like, why are they fun to talk to? Like here, you, uh, well, you, you, you be the Michigan girl, miles. You be the guy. Okay. What's up, babe? Hey, honey. You're looking extra Michigan today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, it is. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you what, the water in Michigan is just something else. Look at you. <laughs> is it? Now, is that Lake Michigan or is that Lake Superior? We're talking about Flint, baby. Oh, geez. Oh, isn't that a hot topic? Yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're, already. you're right to call off the act out on that one. We don't know where that's going to go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. I, I didn't know why I thought that experiment was going to get us anywhere. What do, do yeah, they, I was do, like, what am I supposed to do? Do they talk to you about your, your what, what do you like? What are they bringing up? Do, uh, you know, are they good at well, flirting? Is that what you're kind of thinking? I don't know about that. I'm, I'm a terrible flirter myself, so I can't even articulate that well. But uh, I studied structural engineering in college myself, and they're both engineers, so it's just really relatable. Uh, I also joke around with them because I'm such a big fan of the podcast that I'll walk into their house uh, when we hang out, and I'll throw my, my jack in the middle of a bed, or I'll talk about going to Meyer, even though I've never been to Meyer. I learned about where to like park, I guess, parking and going in the right door is a big thing there. Uh, when I leave the house, I'll say, I'll tell the folks that I says hi and to watch for deer and they get a crack out of that. So okay. never been there, but I, I enjoyed, yeah, they're good people, right? That, if they watch for deer, they have to be good people. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now the, the thing that we haven't quite addressed yet, the old elephant in the room is you have screwed it up with all these women somehow. Yeah, what's going on? You're not currently dating any oh, of them. That is very true. That is very true. I have totally... I totally botched that. How did you botch it? I, I think that I'm probably just uh, too honest about my feelings. Like if I, by the third one, I was kind of like, Oh, you're from Michigan. I'm already in love. And I probably should not have told her that. Oh, I, I just immediately knew that. Yeah. That, that one, that one was a bad idea. Yeah. That's bad on a few levels. You know, you're kind of then roping her into the previous girls that you dated. You know, it's that's probably not great. Um, did it? Yeah, I'm like, you got a point. Did you say I love you way too early? Is that really what happened? One of the two, definitely. The other, the other is not so. Okay, so here's the thing. This is just Midwest people in general. They are like a deer, essentially, and it's very easy to startle a deer mm -hmm. if you come on too strong. If you make too many sudden movements. They're going to put their head up and then they're going to jump and trot away. And so the biggest thing with just Midwest people in general, you got to take your time. Take your time. You got to put on a little camo. You got to paint your face. Give them be, some salt. Give them some salt. Uh, be patient. Wait to get a broadside shot of the deer. You know, don't just try and take the first shot when you see their antlers popping through. Call a little bit. Yeah. You know, get 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 erotic with it uh, through the audio. You sometimes uh, got to douse area. yourself in a little urine, you know. Yeah. Like, Have you been peeing on yourself? <laughs> Not usually, no. Well, maybe so, you should start. So next time you're nose to nose with a Michigan doe, I want you to take your time. I want you to, you know, be patient. Don't make any sudden movements. And I think you might have a better shot. Yeah, you want to be one with nature. You want to be one with their environment. You want to be chill. You know, you want to uh, almost make it seem like you don't even uh, need care. them to like you. Yeah. yeah, you don't care. You know, and do. Okay, so. Yes. No, 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 Charlie, go ahead. I'm sorry. There's a bit of a lie. I didn't want to interrupt. Sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. Um, I was I think I was just going to say kind of uh, I forgot what I was going to say. You go now. <laughs> I'm a great podcast okay, okay. host. No, I just, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> you really are. I learned from you. No, I insist. I, I learned that from you, Charlie. Yeah, there you go. After you. Yeah. No, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. We'll be at this stop sign all day. All right. What were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So there was a nice gal who called into the podcast uh, maybe in, I don't know, 10, 15 episodes ago. She's from the South. And she said that she wanted her Southern, she wanted men to be more direct, right? You're saying the complete opposite for a Midwest woman. I got to, I got to dance around a bit is what I'm hearing. Well, you can be direct, but only if they want you to be direct, meaning you don't just go and r- bum rush a deer. You have to be patient, whatever. And then when they talk to you, you have to feel it out and know when to be direct. Yeah. You've got to understand You're that. You're still going to have to take a shot at the deer. Yes. But you just got to be patient with it and you can't just start firing away right away. And when you, when you take a shot, okay, you, you don't, with, with these women, you, you don't aim for the legs. Mm-hmm. You don't aim for the head. Mm-mm. You don't aim for the chest, but close to the chest, you aim right for the heart. Mm-hmm. And it's I was through, gonna say the shoulder, but it's well, sure, yeah. I mean, that's, that's another more technicality, an yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, it's through the heart that it all drops into place. And that's a great analogy, actually, okay. Charlie. It is, although it's 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 you know, it, there there are a lot of serial killers from the Midwest, so we want to kind of make sure we're careful with the analogy at the same time. We're talking about deer, though. We're not talking about humans. I well, I know we're talking about. I'm just saying for people who are not familiar with analogies, they may get confused, and I'm throwing this out there as a disclaimer. Which was probably unnecessary, and now I just screwed the whole analogy up. But the point is. Um, broadheads, and um, do you like that point? That was fun. Yeah. Um. So anyway, how do you feel about that? I, I love it. The other thing, so I'm gonna it's gonna take some recalibrating on my side. The other idea is I. The question is, do I just move to Michigan and and increase my odds? Is that <laughs> is that just a terrible idea? Um, I mean, you're going to be like a, like a puppy in, in a toy store. You're not going to know which one to, to play with first. You know, it's going to be kind of a overwhelming experience. <laughs> Ease yourself yeah, in. I would maybe just like move to Wisconsin first and then you can like once spend a weekend over in Michigan and then move back. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't just go full go. I think that it's going to be disastrous for you. Park it in Iowa for a little bit. Park it yeah. in Cedar yeah. Falls, Iowa. Start on like the <laughs> west side of Nebraska. Yeah. And then just start working your way. Yeah. You know, you'll learn a lot. Okay. But huh. I think you would have thought. <laughs> He's like, I was really looking forward to moving to Michigan. <laughs> huh. Who would have thunk? Um... <laughs> I mean, you, you, you know, the other thing is a lot of... You know of, what? Trial by fire. Throw them into the ring. Yeah, get on in there. Move to Michigan and just figure it out. Yeah, you're, you're gonna, here's the thing you got to understand. You're going to have to emulate the way a lot of Michigan guys are, you know, which is very much coy, very much, you know, um, just sort of waiting in the wings for uh, another fella to lose their chance, and then you kind of just uh, be friends with them and... Uh, you know, ask them if they need help with anything a bunch, you know, and almost ma- almost friend zone. Get close to the friend zone, but not well, too close. But I, yeah, I like the idea. Just offer to help for stuff and then uh, eventually huh. she'll fall in love with you. And if, okay. the, if that doesn't do that, if that doesn't work, it was Miles's idea. Right, 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 right. Of course. Yeah, but only do sexy helping stuff. You don't want to like... <laughs> You don't want to be like, hey, I'm going to come over and I'm going to fix your sewer line. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to want to, like, like do stuff where you can, like, take your shirt off and all that. Like, I'm going to mow your lawn with my shirt off and things like that. Otherwise, it could be disastrous. Or, you know, okay. more okay. realistic is probably shovel her walk in cargo shorts. Mm-hmm. She'll really feel at home in that scenario. And then she goes, that is, oh, I, oh, my gosh, yeah. you look so you look so cold out there. Do you want to come in for a nice hot cup of cocoa and, and warm up? 
cozy up to me and and warm up. Yeah. And, and then you've got and then you got it in, you know, and then you can you can say, oh, maybe we put a little brandy in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't oh. even notice because I'm so manly. I was shoveling this thing in shorts. I didn't even notice how cold I was. But now that you mention it. Yeah, I'm a little cold. What do you think of that? OK, OK. I like it. I'm gonna this next no we get. Don't you guys worry. Okay. Are, are you writing I'm all over it? I'm gonna writing, get my best three guys right on it. Are you writing this down? I got notes. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's also on the podcast if he <laughs> wants to re listen to it. You know, <laughs> bellied up podcast, right, wherever right, you right, get right, your right. podcast. Yeah. No problem. Well, I think we did a good deed here, Miles. What do you think? Finding love in all the weird places. Yeah, I think that uh I mean you're right on nail on the head that Midwestern Michigan women are very attractive. Although I am taken, so cool it. But um <laughs> Miles. I think you got it. Oh, I see. I, I I was confused what you were saying. Now I figured it out. Thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Uh really appreciate it. I, I'll take it to heart. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I execute on that, uh, uh, with these good notes and, uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Watch for deer and tell the folks that says hi. Yeah. All right. Real that good. sounds you real too. good. My guy. Take care now. Take care. Well, miles, we really had a third guest on the podcast there. I think we did better with him. You know, I think the deer analogy was really nice. I think that worked out. Yeah. I think the whole analogy of hit him in the heart mm -hmm. was actually very profound, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Right on point. <laughs> Broad point. You're like, oh, I did that. You know, mm -hmm. the bow hunters will like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, folks. Yes, folks. What are we? Should we do another caller or are we? Uh, or what? Is that it? No, we have another caller. Oh, yeah, because we've done two, right? <laughs> Sometimes I forget if we're on two or three. Folks, we are presented by Nicolay Law. Nicolay is accident and injury law firm with offices in Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota. They've been helping folks in the Midwest since our friend Russell started this deal in 2000. Seven. It's a family business. And after Ruff, Russell started, I almost said ruffle and that would have ruffled Ru Russell's feathers. <laughs> so I'm glad I caught that. But he brought his brothers in, his sister, his cousins, and now even his mom works at the firm. Holy smokes. Just like you, Charlie. Just you like got me. a whole family operation a over there. Family. What do they call that? It's a family tradition. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So you're definitely going to be treated. Be careful what state you say that in, though. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, you know, don't sound a little bit of family traditions, you know, <laughs> that creates cousins with funny eyes. So anyway, you're definitely going to be treated like family uh, by the Nicolay family. And you can check them out, Miles, NicolayLaw.com. Welcome to the Belly It Up podcast. Who are we talking to? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Is this Miles? This is Miles. How are we doing? Who do we got? My name's Evelyn. Evelyn, welcome to the I'm podcast. Calling from Grand Forks. Oh, you're I'm calling, calling from, from Grand Forks, Grand Forks North Dakota, yeah. Charlie. Finally, we get someone to call in from old North Dakota. We're down here in Fargo. Well, Miles, Miles, I would not say I'm from North Dakota. I just go to school here. I'm actually from Minnesota. Okay. But that's all right. We'll take anyone okay. we can get here in North Dakota. <laughs> Same church, different pew. <laughs> Hey, do not compare Minnesota and North Dakota like that. Ooh, I would agree. That's Very a little different. animosity. <laughs> I, I, which do you like better, Minnesota or North Dakota? I love Minnesota. I'm a Minnesotan through and through. Are you a Vikings fan? Yeah, I mean, I am sort of by birth. I don't really follow it, but <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. Well, so Charlie's going to be yeah, in Grand not, Forks later this week. Yeah, I'm going to be in Grand Forks on something Thursday or Friday Thursday or Saturday. Night. Thursday. I will be out of town, unfortunately. Oh, okay, oh. you're shampooing your hair out of town. I get it. Yep. <laughs> I get it. Well, I for you boys, maybe some advice. Okay, what is it? 
Well, so I, I um, am a student here at UCB, and I met my boyfriend here last year, and he is from Chicago. We're both flight students, um, and he is a big city boy, and I'm wondering how I can introduce him to my extended Midwestern, very Midwestern small town family okay. and how to make that an easy transition for him. <laughs> okay. Or just how to get him and what it's like to be Midwestern. Yes. Small town. So you're wondering how you take <laughs> your boyfriend who is from Chicago and introduce him into small town Midwest culture. Yes, exactly. Now, is he excited about it or is he kind of confused by the whole thing? He is very confused by the whole thing. His family is all spread out around the world and mine is all in southern Minnesota. <laughs> and it's just a very new world for him. How long have you been dating him? Um, For almost a year. There's still time to get out. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> for me or for him? Both. <laughs> no, oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. For the vote of confidence. Yeah. No, um, so is he nervous or is he kind of just approaching it? Because he, he has he met your family? He's only met my parents. But, and um, how did that go? Him, it went well. There, there was definitely a few times where I could tell like they weren't on the same wavelength, you know, my, it's just very different families, very different, um, cultures. My mother loves this podcast. So I'm trying not to say anything too bad about it because she listens to it all the time. So, okay. But, what was, <laughs> what was, give us an example that you can share of like, what, where there was kind of like, oof, they're not on the same page. My boyfriend is, he finds it hard to understand how much time I spend with my like extended family and how much that means to me because I've just grown up like that and he hasn't really. And then just the whole like small town walking into Target and you run into five people that you know, at least, you know, he's not very comfortable with that whole idea. And I'm trying to introduce him to it slowly because, yeah, that's just part of my big part of my life. Right. What we're dealing you with know. here is sort of a real life Hallmark film. <laughs> Big city guy right. comes to the small town. You know, the gal is really into her family. He's like, I'm a big city boy, you know, and then he. Uh, you were, you, were you were you working at a coffee shop yeah. per se when you guys met? <laughs> Was he coming in to get his, no. his Frappuccino? <laughs> and you're like, we only drink black coffee around here. Uh, we're going to have to recreate that scene. Yeah. But no, we met on a ski trip last year, actually. Oh, a, a ski trip. school ski trip. Well, what, what yeah. attracted you mm -hmm. two about each other? Because you both come from very different backgrounds. What, what, what are the things that he likes about you, would you say? What are the top three things he likes about you and then the top three things you like about him? Probably, I think he likes how down to earth I am compared to um, more city people. I'm a lot different. I'm a lot more, I'd say down to earth. And, um, I, I work really hard for maybe the second thing is that I like work really hard at school. I think, um, he likes that about me. And then third thing is probably that I'm a pilot and he's a pilot. So, <laughs> um, but three things that I like about him are probably his confidence, which I think comes from being a city boy. Um, something new for me for sure and then um i like his i think he's really smart and then um obviously he makes me laugh really really hard so those are probably I mean, those are important. and he's really um yeah and he's really real so i like that too okay did you guys meet in the cockpit yeah. uh, miles i knew you no. were gonna do it <laughs> I knew, I knew you couldn't <laughs> pass it up, could you? <laughs> <I couldn't. laughs> He's giggling at himself. He's uh, proud of that one. Oh, oh I bet. <laughs> no, we met on the slopes in Montana last year. On the slopes so. of Montana, nice. And and, and you're both. Uh, was he or is one of you a good skier and the other one not a good skier? I'd say we're both good skiers. Okay, you can probably do more than. Me. 
still call myself a good skier, All right. even though I grew up skiing in Minnesota. In Minnesota, <laughs> yeah. Andy's Towers yeah. Hills. <laughs> anyway, so Charlie. Yeah. Miles, I don't know how. Well, oh, go ahead. Miles, I don't know how you live in Park, by the way. Why? There's nothing. That's also another part of my question. Is you live in later, Grand what, Forks. What do I do in North Dakota? It's so boring here. So yeah. this is the heart of it. What do you, <laughs> Miles, what does somebody do in North Dakota? Because I'll be honest, I had the same question coming here. Uh, but then, <laughs> you know, I've said this story before and I'll say it again. There was nothing more beautiful than driving with Miles. We went through the city of Fargo and then West Fargo. And before you knew it, I was like, Miles, is this where they filmed the moon landing? And he was like, yep, right over there. <laughs> It was in the winter. It's awful. Well, okay. I'll, I'll oh, lay yeah. it out for you. So let's start with the summer. So what we like to do here in North Dakota in the summer, something fun you could do, is you're going to drive about an hour east into Minnesota. And that's it. And then you go to the lakes country there. In the winter. Wait, wait, wait. Pause. The, I, I'm pausing well, on this. Hold on. Let me, in the winter, um, it gets pretty cold here, obviously. So then what you want to do is you want to drive a little bit north to the airport. <laughs> and you want to fly somewhere warm. <laughs> And yeah. and spend a week or so in the warm weather, and that's usually what I like to do here yeah. in North Dakota. <laughs> is leave North you know, Dakota. No, that would be great if I wasn't a broke college student. Mm-hmm. That would be great, but someday. No, but I mean it's pretty cold up here right now. Yes, it is. Um, I mean we there's hunting and fishing in North Dakota. You know, I do it in Minnesota, yeah. in South Dakota. <laughs> but Ryan, who works for me, he hunts and fish and stuff in North Dakota. Um, right, right. So there's that. <laughs> there's a lot of bars that you can go to. Yeah, uh, true. You could true. maybe catch a <laughs> musical in Medora. You could also go Medora. to Medora. Yeah, you, you could go to the state fair in Minot. Just a quick, easy drive oh, up to Minot. Minot. So exciting. Yep, exciting. <laughs> easy to get to. Um, oh, yeah. Just straight shot. Yeah. Uh, state Capitol's on a hill. <laughs> <laughs> so you I, I, I don't know if I'd call it a hill. <laughs> well, it's... it's, it's well, I don't think... Bismarck's the city on the hill. Everyone knows that, but... Um, okay, it's, okay. It's a mound. Um, so, I mean, I just... <laughs> Those sound pretty fun to me. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could go for a drive. There's lots of roads. So we'll basically s- what I need to do is just go to Minnesota uh, to I'm do not to see that at all. Trees and lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. In Jamestown there's a big buffalo. Big buffalo sculpture to look at. Is it made out of fiberglass? Yeah. It wasn't for- uh, I don't know <laughs> what it's made out of, I guess. Do you guys have a Paul Bunyan that someone could visit? But here's the thing. If you live in the place with all the fun stuff, then you're just always stuck in the place with all the fun stuff. If you live in a place with no okay, fun stuff, yeah. you get to have special times and leave and go do fun stuff. <laughs> I always wonder that. If you live in Great LA, way to look at if it. If you live in LA and you want to go on a warm vacation, it's the same as being at home. How is that it? How is that fun? <laughs> you know? So I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, you, you got a point there. You got a point there. And it's a great place to study here because there's really nothing else to do. <laughs> so it also is nice to keep <laughs> keep crime at bay. You know, there's not a lot of people wanting to live here. It's yeah, cold in you're the right. winter. Yep. Um, can leave my door unlocked. Yeah. So, so to clarify the things to do for fun in mm-hmm. North Dakota, aside for leave North Dakota is drive <laughs> to a big Buffalo or a little hill <laughs> with the capital. It's not, a, it's just a hill. Uh, <laughs> it's called capital. Hill. Okay. Okay. Or hunt for something that you'd probably have a better shot at in South Dakota. Yeah, probably. I'm also not a big hunter. Sorry, guys. All right. No, North Dakota's got never good got hunting. Into it. it does? Yeah, it's got good hunting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's done hunt, so. Okay. It's moot. Well, oh, 
you're a pilot. <laughs> it is fun to fly over the state of North Dakota. Also, I'll say there's a Miles, lot. A lot it of, really isn't that fun to fly <laughs> over no. the state of North Dakota. There's nothing to look at. Well, I'll say this. Well, no, it's nice because then you can get a good vantage point of all the other states and you don't got to fly over them, you know? <laughs> There's nothing blocking true, your view true, true. of all the stuff you want to look at. See, that's... Yep, awesome. yep. Can't argue there. On the plus side, <laughs> if you're a pilot and your boo thing is a pilot, the good thing about North Dakota is if you have engine trouble, there are plenty of safe places to land <laughs> in North Dakota with nobody occupying oh, yeah. them. That is yes, true. that is actually really good. Really nice. Yeah. If that ever happens, hopefully not. Knock on wood. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Hey, where I, are you two today? Okay, well, let's go here. What would you say about Minnesota? It is so great. And you can't say the goddamn lakes oh either. Gosh. All right. Well, there's 10,000 <laughs> of them, Miles. That's, it's on the license plate. She's got to be able to say that. What else besides the lakes is yeah. so great yeah. in Minnesota? Besides going to the okay, boundary so waters or Duluth <laughs> or going and catching a sports what? game in Minneapolis, besides all of that, all right, what is there fair. even to do? Okay, fine. I love to ski in Lutzen, Minnesota. I love to go up to Grand Marais and camp up there. I said besides I the boundary love- waters area, okay? <laughs> hey, outside of the boundary. That's As, true. Outside of the that technical boundary it waters the, area. Besides the North Shore. <laughs> okay. You're, you know, you really said the best things about Minnesota. But anyway, <laughs> I love my cabin that is on a lake. I God. love going shopping in downtown Minneapolis and catching concerts and uh, yeah, and Minnesota Nice is a real thing. Dude, so. we have concerts. The guy who owns a bar said he went to a concert at the Fargo Theater of the Nitty Gritty Band. Nitty Gritty, yeah. So, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Yeah, well, I have not heard of the Nitty Gritty Band. <laughs> oh, you've heard them. You just don't know. Oh, okay. I did catch the Red Hot Chili Peppers in Fargo in April. <laughs> wow. So I guess you're right. Can't catch that in southern Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually went to Southern. They actually went to Minneapolis the next day, Miles. So good I, try. Pretty central, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have enough? Where are you two today? Oh, she's changing the subject We're now. We're in Fargo at Chubb's Pub right now. Yeah. You're in Fargo. Oh. Yeah, it's come just, on down. It's just an hour drive away. Hour drive. <laughs> That's nothing. See, doesn't that sound fun? How many? Uh, yeah. How many Walmarts do you pass on your way between here and there? Not not any, I don't um, think. Really? A lot yeah, of Dollar no. Generals, but... There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing in between Fargo and Grand Forks. Well, there's Mayville. Come on. Don't forget about the Comets. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> there's Thompson. Yeah. That's another town south of Grand Forks. Hill, the, bur- mm-hmm, the borough, as we call it, Are in you- the North Dakota community. <laughs> no, you're just <laughs> listing towns in North Dakota, <laughs> saying nothing oh, about the them. Population what a, we have, under you guys have the Boundary Waters. We have Devil's Lake. Great ice fishing up there in Devil's yeah. Lake. I'm, yeah. I'm going to yeah. look up top things to do in North Dakota and see if they haven't been mentioned yet. Because you know, I think if Thank when it, you. yes, yes, what? Oh, jeez. I don't. I don't know how to describe. I love living in North Dakota. I don't want people to think because I was saying there's not that much to do. It's just. It's more of just the feeling of being in North Dakota it feels really good. So, I gotta yeah, stick up for yeah, my state. Yeah. This thing has thirty musty places <laughs> in North Dakota. Thirty of them. Look at all that. All right, let's hear them. All right, so uh, <laughs> scrolling oh, by. Hang on, them. I'm scrolling by. Uh, Missouri, uh, the Missouri Yellowstone Confluence Interpretive Center. I love that center. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I love that center. <laughs> Fort Union Trading Post National Historic uh, Site. We forgot to mention that we have Bonanzaville. What is Bonanzaville? It's, it's a historic place you can go. Turtle Mountain. Chippewa Heritage Center, Love Scandinavian center. Heritage Center. All your stuff Love is heritage center. centers. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh That's because our that's because we have a rich history. <laughs> yep. Uh the Ma the Mod uh, Hay Trail. Love so trail. Mount Lake uh Sac uh Sakakawea. Uh, yep. 
uh, and Garrison Dam. Yeah, we, that I looks love, beautiful. Wow. I love that dam. Where is that? Is this is that a picture that's that, on the west side of the state? Historic site. A lot wow. of historic sites. Very well, another St. Louis and Clark Interpretive Center. What the? F- <laughs> what are these interpretive centers, dude? <laughs> Like it's uh, does en- does anybody know what an interpretive center is? I don't know. For Abraham, uh, the Fort Abe Lincoln State Park. So that's nice. North Dakota State Capitol on a tough. hill. I told there you, is no dude. hill there, dude. That's that because is- it's too close of a photo. He took a zoomed out photo. The Dakota Zoo. You can see more than six hundred animals. Three hundred of them are raccoons. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pioneer Trails <laughs> Regional Museum. So that's nice. Enchanted Highway. Uh, <laughs> classic roadside art. That's what it you know, forms the giant metal statues. Wow, this is exciting. Uh, Dickinson Museum exciting Center. Stuff. Yeah, so we got lots of centers and lots <laughs> of trails and roads. And I tell you what, I love them. I love them. I've been <laughs> to all of those. Oh, that is a nice. Tons of times. That big buffalo is pretty cool. I told you. Wow. Look at I got to go see the big buffalo. Where is that again? That James is. In Minot? Jamestown. Jamestown. Don't Jamestown. drive to Minot. Okay. That would not be the right direction. There's, <laughs> there's an international peace garden. So we are the peace something. garden state. I think. I didn't know that. The ge- the geographic center of the, the U.S. is in Rugby, North Dakota, I think. That's pretty cool. Rugby, North Dakota? Is that right, Miles? Yeah, it is. Geogra- yeah. Did you just say that, yeah, that is? No, I, yeah, that is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ronald Reagan uh, Minuteman Missile State Historic Site. A few more <laughs> zoos. The Fargo Air Museum. Uh, Bonan- you would like that? Come on down and check out the Air Museum. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of, lot of, av- lot of aviation to be had. Oh, you got a plane <laughs> art museum. Oh, planes art museum. That's right down the road. Oh, maybe we should go do that, Miles. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. anyways, I don't. I think I rest my case. <laughs> yep, you do. Thank you for the for all the information. I think you win that one. Yes. Right. Well, there we have it, folks. North Dakota, hell of a place to come and uh, spend your time. It's also a hell of a place to leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then come back to and leave. Well, thank you for the call. Um, I, You know, I really hope that things go well with the boo thing. And, um, yeah, you guys going to uh, pilot together, get your own private pilots thing and uh, start your own uh, business. You could do aerial tours of North Dakota. That would be <laughs> you guys could fly over the Buffalo. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great about. idea. Thank you, Charlie. Well, thank <laughs> you. Here, Charlie, here quick. We'll role play. We yeah. are. We are them. Yeah. And we are over the intercom. We are doing the oh, yeah. tour. <laughs> Passengers, we just want to say we've reached 10,000 feet. You're free to move above the cabin. And if you look to our right, you can see uh, farmland and a few <laughs> raccoons. And then if you really squint, you can see Canada. Yeah. And we are just passing <laughs> over the big buffalo. And then... Look at, look at how big that buffalo is. Fun fact, folks, we have flown over 13 interpretive historical sites, <laughs> and that is the most of any state in the Union. And it looks like we're going to actually have to climb to 11,000 feet because we are approaching the capital on the hill, and uh, we may honey, run into... Honey, um, where is the hill? Honey, I can't see the hill. You're going to have to squint into off into the distance. I still can't see the hill, honey. I I, I still get, <laughs> I see the damn buffalo. Why are we going past the buffalo? We already went there. I uh, let's just keep circling the buffalo. Maybe they won't notice. And that's it. I mean, that, we wrote the script for you guys. Perfect. Thank you. Hopefully I make a lot of money off that. Oh yeah, you will. Aerial tours of North Dakota. Can't beat it. <sighs> Sorry, that was a burp into the microphone. My Good. apologies. Well, thanks for calling in. And uh, uh-huh. sad you can't go to Charlie's show. He's got a couple more in Fargo if you want to make a trip. But uh, 
I might have to. Yeah. How far will it's, you go? It's not about that there's nothing to do in North Dakota. It's that you just haven't been creative enough. You're right. You're right. And that. You got to think of more things to do. That should be on the sign when you drive into North Dakota. We're, you know what? We're a blank canvas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. You know, mm-hmm. we were. Hey, we are the the land of uh, opportunity here in North Dakota. Anything you can imagine. <laughs> Anything it, you can interpret. Just try not to freeze. Just try not to freeze to death outside. Cause, oh yeah! Wow, it's freezing up here. Yeah, it's only. You act cold. like you're well, from thank you. Florida. You're from southern Minnesota. What do you? It's like got to be five degrees difference right now between Grand Forks and southern Minnesota. This no, this wind up here is crazy. It's like the makes the wind is makes a huge difference. It's so much colder because there's nothing blocking it up here. So that doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. It's nice of you guys to block all the wind for us down here in Fargo. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for calling in, and uh, you know what? Yeah, thanks for picking up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have a good one. We'll see you now. You too. Watch out for that fly. buffalo. Fly safe now. <clears throat> well, Miles, you did a great I, job. I, I, you, I knew this day was coming. You defended the home turf as best as anyone could. I, I, I literally think I gave it my all there. <laughs> But it's kind of one of those things you just got to live here and grow up here and you know why you like living here. Yeah. It's hard to describe. Hard to describe. I I still think you did a great job describing a a blank canvas. It it is what you imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's so many interpretive historical sites. Because it's up to interpretation what (laughs) North Dakota is. (laughs) Well, folks, it was great having you here bellied up to the bar with us on another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. This is your friendly reminder to tip your bartender and tell your folks we says hi and watch out for deer. See you in the next one. Love you guys. And come to North Dakota.